Hey everybody, welcome back to the E.T. Whisper YouTube channel. Greetings to all, this is Ardif, that is A-R-I-D-I-F, and this is its spell. We understand there are many things in which we wish to speak of in this day, but before diving in to the construct, there are two things in which we wish to express. Yet again, first, above and beyond all things expressed within this day to know, feel, and perceive that you are loved and our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, Greetings, Kalina. It is our greatest excitement to be here with you. Greetings, Arda. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, of course, and it is our greatest excitement to share upon the topic that is open for interpretation from Rob's own suggestion to speak what it is we felt of speaking of in this evening. We look into the collective consciousness and one relevant issue and energy has come up over and over and over again since the year of your 2014 energy in this construct is the Orion Wars. Of course, it is spoken of much previously to this construct and much afterward, but 2014 energy is where the energy of the Orion War overlays the collective consciousness of the Earth, co create collective consciousness. The portion of energy that we are diving into this evening is the inter-reptilian conflicts within the Orion Wars. Now, as we've expressed previously, there are many races of reptilians that were involved within what most of you call the Orion Wars, the Orion Conflicts, the Lyrian Conflicts. And this energy within the reptilian co-created collective consciousness, there are many terms and many different portions of reptilian energies involved. First, you look at those that are the Alpha Draconian Consciousness, the main entities who started within the construct of this war to open up their own energy, to start working through this specific galactic collective consciousness in order to achieve the removing of their own incarnation cycle natural form. They utilized fear, they utilized any of the energies that are unnecessarily defaulted towards a negative alignment, such as fear, such as the vibration of unsurety, such as the vibration of intimidation, all of those energies they worked upon in other systems, but in this time, sparking the galactic conflict known as the Orion Wars, they started working within this galactic collective consciousness. Now, many different sub-reptilian races, some in which we will speak of and some in which we will not are also in the same alignment of a type 2 malevolent energies such as those that are of draconian in nature the other entities were within the type 2 mid-range vibration they were neither malevolent or benevolent others were starting to go towards benevolency but a small handful of reptilian races within the galactic collective consciousness were within their own growth and evolution. One of these races you know very well, Treble Yitni comes from a race that is called the Yitz, and in their own incarnation cycle, going from that third to fourth density energy, they received their own portion of co-creation in the conflict. They are in the extreme type one, and at that point, the very type 2 benevolent energies. Now when you are seeing benevolency within the type 2, this is also a spectrum. They were within the 99% range of benevolency at their third to fourth density construction. So these entities were working quite openly on understanding their own selves. They went from eating meats to eating vegetables with the help of those that are called the Nihol Collective Consciousness. Now, understanding 
that the Niho collective consciousness were of higher density, able to traverse through time, able to traverse the entirety of their race through time portals, they created the Yit energy much before the Orion conflict started. In that essence, they were working towards the benefit of teaching and co-creating. Now, normally, this would not be something that would come within the notability or noticeability of those that are Alpha Draconian, but there were an unfortunate encounter between the energies of the Yit consciousness and those that are reptilian constructs from the Orion constellation, the star specifically being Beetle Geis. There were reptilian beings that were highly malevolent that were in both alignment and working with Alpha Draconian consciousness from the Betelgeuse area, and those entities found Treble Yitney's race. They had not quite went into the spacefaring areas yet. They did have extremely functional technology for most third density consciousnesses at that time, but were still not spacefaring by any means able to leave their own solar system or beyond, but were able to work within the four star solar system of the collective consciousness of Capella. That energy and co-creation brought them noticeability from these entities and a direct co-creation. There was an entity who had started going through the solar system collective onto one of the moons that is within the Yet Collective, and in that encounter there was passing entity. They are picking up life signals from that planetary consciousness and from the moon consciousness and knew that these lowly, in their own mind, lowly third density beings were able to construct themselves to the nearest moon. Within their cycle of evolution, this is a rarity. Although many of you perceive the Earth energy is going to your own moon, there is quite a different energy in the way we perceive it. They were able to go to the moon with humans in your own timeline, but only with extraterrestrial assistance. In the yet that are doing them by themselves, this was quite a feat, and not unnoticed by this Betelgeist reptilian being. After seeing this consciousness, they were able to go back, report the energy over, to the Alpha Draconians and then the Alpha Draconians knew that there were benevolent beings in high percentages within the benevolency type 2 degree that would cause or create an imagery of lack of fear. Now the Alpha Draconian conscious mindset at this point was not that there could not be benevolent reptilian beings, there could not not be mid-range type 2 entities it could only be that benevolent and loving beings could not show themselves to other beings within the galactic collective consciousness. If they were to see a reptilian being doing kind things, being very docile, being loving, in fact being what most of you would perceive as a smiling joker, as they would look at this construct, going around the galaxy showing everyone that reptilian energy was not something that could induce or create fear. It was negative construct for their own image. In this way, it would be very similar to a PR firm going into a business about technology and seeing someone who had no high school degree and did not know anything about chemistry or technology being on a commercial for them. It would be a nightmarish event that could cause many entities to not take the energy seriously that reptilian beings were a force to reckon with, a construct of equal and over equal energy that could create fear both militarily, technologically and energetically throughout the entirety of the system. In that way the Yitz were a threat to the construct of those that are called Alpha Draconian. So Alpha Draconian consciousness created an attack upon the Yit planet destroying many of their entities, losing over two-thirds of the population of the entirety of the planet, dropping down into that dense energy of physicality, and also sending the Betelgeist energies of reptilians. Now, this created a large stir as it was heard 
throughout the galaxy that there were a peaceful race of reptilians that were attacked almost into an extinction level event. This caused a great cry out for those that were all the way in the 50% benevolent and malevolent range all the way to the benevolent range of reptilians. Many of those reptilians faced the same forms of intimidation but not as drastically as this. They were not bombarded, killed or murdered. They were not attacked. They were only intimidated by those who said, do not go up against us and do not create kindness with others. Those entities, and there were several tens of thousands of races of reptilian beings in that moment who were creating from that area, who were intimidated in the midstream of their type 2 spectrum, would not fight against these beings. Their might was so great, their power was so large, they would not dare. But now these same beings, feeling disenfranchised in the same way that these unheard of yits were just treated, started feeling a bit sympathetic towards the yit energy. Many of the wounded and old started communicating with the yits, started telepathically communicating with those who were able to receive the communication. There were physical ships that were sent through the Capella system to travel yet any specific planet. In that area of co-creation, many met these yits wounded, started bringing supplies for them, started bringing medicine for them, started bringing all of the equipment that they could to heal those injured. Many of these beings had never seen technology from outside of their own planetary consciousness or the Nihal collective consciousness, so they were able to integrate new ideas and start enhancing their own versions of internal and external technologies. These entities that were yet were very awkward and weird compared to many of the other beings in the perspective of those who visited. They never had seen reptilians that were not ingesting at least portions of living beings, that never seen someone who did not eat animal second density beings. This was awkward and weird. They did not see reptilian beings who meditated for entire portions of days. They did not see entities that were connecting to humanoid consciousness in such a kind, open and loving fashion. This was something new for them. This brought about a co-creation of many entities speaking that created ripples throughout the speaking versions of the news that went around the Galactic Collective Consciousness. This sparked even more uprage within the average Draconian Consciousness, but they knew that this was an inner reptilian conversation. Entities that were outside of reptilians had never heard of what had happened to these yits, besides those that were the Nihal, but the Nihal being type 1 did not interfere. They knew that the Nihal beings would not try to create sympathy for them, as in their own opinion, from the type 1 perspective, these beings created an experience for themselves and did not need the help of others, only needed their own co-creation. So, in that essence, it settled for a while. There were more benevolent reptilian beings who started hearing about these constructs and became upset, started communicating with other beings and non-reptilian beings, such as humanoid, avian beings and insectoid beings. Through that co-creation, there was an upset Alfredraconian construct and they began to attack many of these more benevolent reptilians started even going into the midstream of type 2 spectrum and attacking those, even though they had not stepped out of their bargaining position. This created a complete frustration throughout the reptilian community from those midway in the type 2 spectrum all the way to the benevolent side. Many beings' planets were not as fortunate as treble Yetnis. There was not a two-thirds casualty. There was 90% casualties, 95% casualties. In some races, only handfuls of survivors from an entire planet full of beings. Many of these beings left their own homes, no longer feeling safe, no longer feeling as if they could co-create in their own planetary consciousness. 
there were refugees. These refugees took heart in the stories that they had heard about these yet beings and left towards their own planetary consciousness. Now, in this essence, there were third, fourth, and fifth density beings that were dropping their physical bodies into the third density so that they could co-create with these beings. By doing so, they left portions of their consciousness bout as they physically felt different in their avatar version bodies, as they started co-creating with more pain, more suffering, more feelings of physical hunger. The Yitz taught them to farm. They taught them to utilize vegetable plants that regrew and laboratory grown, something that is similar to your algae and bacteria, and ate from this. They gained sustenance from this. They survived from this, and it fed all of the refugees. At this period, there was a great intertwining of those in the mid-range all the way to the benevolent reptilian beings. Some of the entities that were in Alpha Draconian race saw the amazing structure of energy that had shifted through the entirety of the reptilian consciousness. And in that way, these beings started feeling as if perhaps what they were doing for eons amongst eons co-creating fear and strife within galaxy to galaxy, matrix to matrix, all of these energies from parallel realities to another, to create fear to feed their cycle was not the correct manner. So they engaged in a thought process that had never been experienced by any Alpha Draconian being. Perhaps there is a different way. Perhaps we are not doing things in the correct manner couple of these beings, three entities specifically, but two in the physical nature, visited this planet of yet consciousness without weapons, without a threatening energy, just to observe, without telling others, without co-creating, going up the chain for communication's sake. They watched them. This gave them a great feeling that it did not have to be this way any longer that if they were to finalize their own incarnation cycle, that perhaps it would not be so bad. Being reborn in a galaxy that supports all versions of reptilian energies that can hold and love reptilian energies, just as the Nihal did to the Yitz in the first place, that perhaps this could be an experience for them. So those entities took their thoughts with him never speaking to any other beings about it, but energetically it planned to seed within the Alpha Draconian construct. Energetically, it produced a small fraction within their entire collective consciousness. That same line that many of the its felt within one another, whether they should create an army to protect their own planet, to avoid further life loss, or to follow what the Nihal had told them about the laws of attraction. So the same division that happened within the Alpha Draconian and the Yitz created an entire division within many of those that co-created with both races. Several eons later, after the Yitz had already joined in the full density, after the beings who were Alpha Draconian had reincarnated into new physical bodies, the energy stayed with him. In that time period, there was the first fractioning of entities that left the main order of Alpha Draconis, the main order of the ancient reptilian beings. These entities now, you are well aware of, they are creating from very malevolent places, 75% malevolency, 60% uh, malevolency, all the way down to 35% malevolency, and the rest benevolency. Many of these beings that once thought would never leave the entire full-ended version of that energy of complete and utter disconnection from all other energies are starting to feel their connection. This now moment had taken place within this very turning point of the inner reptilian conflict within the Orion Wars. You may begin your queries at your leisure.
were you when you were talking about the Yitz, are you saying that started the Orion Wars or are you saying that the Orion Wars started after? Yes, the Orion Wars were already deep within their own conflict before this started. So this was approximately 300,000 years after the Orion conflict had started. Thank you, Arda. Yes, of course. Okay, so I had a question that uh, may or may not be a little on or off topic uh, regarding the Nihal, uh, because the Nihal are considered a branch of future humans. Yes. Who created the Yit race. And um, yes. ended up putting the Yitz on our timeline so we would have that relationship with them. Now that kind of tells me that there is, either they were on an alternate, obviously they're on a different timeline, but it almost gives me the impression that there's another version where maybe the Orion Wars... And everything must have been much worse because their idea of creating the Yit race was to gift the the Yits to um, to this universe and to humans also to help um, humans to alleviate a lot of that fear and trauma. So I would I was wondering if you talk could talk about that. What was their reason for creating? the Yitz, and if in fact there was some alternate um, timeline or, or events that happened and took place and how it compares to what's unfolding right now. Yes, of course. Now, if you are asking for the specific reasoning of the Nihal consciousness to place the energy in that exact time during that conflict, we cannot give you this, but the Nihal are able to. When you are talking about energetically speaking, why this reason occurred, the Nihol understood trauma. They came from the human collective consciousness. The Yitz did not know trauma. Being in that timeline, energetically speaking, it gave the Yitz the understanding of loss, the understanding of a duality that is more than just the ability to find food, as many of our own races have experienced. It is more of an adversity than finding the difference between political idealism. It was something in where their entire planet was bombarded and hurt and destroyed a great deal of lives, but was still able to find a perfect balance of love and peace within themselves. That is extremely needed, not only in the co-creation with human consciousness, but the co-creation with all of the other reptilian co-creators that they experienced. So in that essence, energetically speaking, in the large picture, that is why that energy occurred. Now you are correct in saying there are multiple alternate versions of Yitz and all, multiple other versions, timelines of experiences throughout the version of the energies, but how they are coalescing with the energies of now is many of the Earth entities that were incarnating from the first Earth incarnation cycle to this specific human incarnation cycle, all of the entities that flux from one energy started grouping together to reincarnate. So many of you who are co-creators of those that were killing within the Orion Wars are co-creating your own Earth to heal. Many of you who were victims in the Orion Wars also came to Earth. Earth is one of few collective consciousnesses where many of those who participated in the Orion Wars came to reconnect, reconfirm, recalculate, and co-create a newer, different, transmutative version of experiences. That's interesting because, you know, throughout a lot of literature there's always the concept of, like, a new Earth, but would you say in a sense that this planet now is kind of, from the Orion Wars perspective, a new Earth for um, different um, beings from previous incarnations are now incarnating together on Earth. So what is the dynamic with that? And how would, is that right, that concept? Is that why this concept of a new Earth keeps popping up for people in various different religions? and? 
Yes, in fact, the New Earth ideal comes from several dozens of different perspectives and points, but its relevancy to the Orion War is this. There were entities within the Lyran construct whose planet were destroyed. There are many humanoid versions and reptilian versions alike whose entire planets were destroyed. Many of those souls are within the Earth Collective Consciousness, hence the New Earth the new planet, the new experience fall into experience, but many of the entities who were also involved within the Orion War has already incarnated in different cycles well before coming into the Earth. So in their own experience, each different incarnation cycle was a new planetary consciousness, a new co-created collective consciousness. So in that essence, there are many religious ideals that co-create a place or energy for that connection point, but the majority of the new earth energy is a much different perspective altogether, and we will dive into those when those points are more relevant to the topic within. We will only say generically that the new earth is also a transmutation from third to fourth density consciousness. It is a new version of earth. It is a new dimension of Earth, and it is a new vibrational quality of Earth. Thank you. Yes, of course. Okay, Artif, so you had spoken about um, how the Yitz had gotten attacked terribly by the Dracos. In fact, they had lost two-thirds of their population at one point. Um, so I want to know what it is that there's, they seem to have a bit of a different style or system at least here on earth going going on um i don't know if things have changed a bit in their dynamics and the way that they handle with inducing fear um post orion wars uh for example from what i understand it seems like they do more of a psychic manipulation with you know we have many names for them but a lot of people call them like the one percent on top or they might refer to them as the Illuminati or, or whatever, that control and induce fear through human beings and hybrids and whatever it is, and it trickles on down. Is it true that we humans could be physically attacked by Dracos, or is it more of a psychic thing, or is it both? And how would we keep ourselves from getting attacked in any way by Draconians and repeating the Orion Wars all over again? Yes, first of all, there is no need for the fear of a physical engagement with these entities. When the Orion Wars first started, they were co-creations of the Alpha Draconians first entering this galactic collective consciousness. At the time period in where the Yitz were attacked was over 500,000 years after the Orion conflict had started. So in this point, they had already integrated into the galactic system and did not appreciate the positive version reptilians that were about. In that energy, from that point to there was one half of one million years approximately. From that point until this point, there is several million years of your linear time and place. The area of the Alpha Draconian energy is already deeply ingrained within the galactic collective consciousnesses in the places that will co-create with him. The places that will not, they are already not a part of, and the places that they do, they are well dug into the systems. That was the very beginning essence of the energy. This is what we would perceive as mid to end stream version of energy. Specifically, when speaking of the Earth, once the entire Earth co-creator collective sees no need for their own separation and fear, then the Alpha Draconian energy will no longer be able to pay a part of this co-creation also. So understanding that this energy is not relevant at all as far as the physical engagements go, but you are correct, there are systems of fear that are in place, but those are only for those who desire and wish to co-create with him. Thank you. Yes, of course. Well now, and I, I know and I'm hoping I'm not being off 
too off topic with the Orion Wars, but I try to think of, you know, how it mirrors and how it reflects for how we as the human race have been affected by the Orion Wars. And I think about how the Nihal are so positive and the kind of changes that they made by gifting the Yitz that kind of reflects that positive version of reptilians, which kind of creates a, a balance, a more balanced viewpoint of reptilians. I also want to shift over to um, what a lot of people call the Greys or Zeta Reticuli, or there's all kinds of races of them. Let's talk about those that came in. Cause you talked about how the Dracos came from another matrix, and with them came another version of basically a um, tragically altered version of the human based on a very sad history of what had happened to them. And they had kind of became enslaved and indebted uh, in their minds, from what I understand, to the Alpha Draconians. Could you talk about the other matrix they came from, if in fact in that they had a version of Orion Wars, and what that message is teaching us from that matrix to this one. Yes, first of all, the Alpha Draconian energies were within this matrix well before ever engaging with those versions of humans that now most humans call Zeta Reticuli or Grey Beings. Again, several dozens of millions of years between that area and the next, but in the co-creation of that matrix, there were energies that were similar to what you would call the Orion Wars, conflict within the galaxy that is known as Milky Way, but not quite in the same fashion. Reptilian energies were not as prevalent or potent within the conflict, but you look at this matrix, you look at that matrix, you look at the Milky Way galaxy as we all understand and know it, that energy collectively there have been hundreds of trillions of large-scale conflicts throughout from the beginning of our own galactic collective consciousness to the end of the galactic collective consciousness there will be possibly and probability say trillions more of the same versions of conflicts these are not uncommon within the duality played version reality and physical structure. So in that essence it is not different, but it is different by understanding, by name, and by the players who co-created in both of those conflicts in both matrices. We must express also that our time for this evening has come to an end, but before disconnecting remind yourself, as relevant as the energy that we have expressed is, to know feel and perceive that you are loved as vital importance in our own perspective. Knowing your history and making your history repeat are two different understandings. Knowing your own history and engaging emotionally and energetically fixating on your own history are also two different things. To know what has occurred before with energy, to know where that energy transmuted what it is now, is a very wonderful tool of understanding. It is a wonderful tool of co-creation, but if you allow it to sway the who and what that you are in this moment, it can cause imbalances. We tell you this not so that you carry a heavy heart for once, what was, for what things are in this moment, or what things could be within the future. We tell you this so that you can co-create the greatest resistant free version of your reality that is possible in the moment, and we thank you for this. Thank you so much, our ideas. Yes, and thank you also, Kalina, for co-creating with us also. You are loved, and we love you. You are loved, we love you, and we also love the Yitz, we want to extend our love to you as well. Yes, of course, mm -hmm. Trevor Yitney accepts not only as a singular member, but as part of the entire collective consciousness. They also send their love to each and every one of you, and you, Kalina. We bid you all adieu for this evening. Adieu. adieu.